What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where well, last time we was working on this building which involves steel and the uh, assembly parts this including stators and mortars and then we got the smart plating and versatile framework uh, into the actual space elevator as well as the advanced wiring automated wiring I have to double check the name <laughs> So the first thing I want to do today is I want to send off our space elevator so we can start and unlock tier 5 and 6. So the first thing we're going to do is go in here, we're going to seal it, and then we're going to bloody send it once the capsule is full. And then we can see what next is the next thing that gets ad added to the top of the assembly. Welcome to the Project Assembly Pioneer Progress Presentation. Thank you, Ada. The Phase 2 project part shipment is now ready for delivery. On delivery, Phase 2 will be completed and the construction dock will be constructed. After completion of Phase 2, the technologies of Tiers 5 and 6 will become available in the hub. Jetpack this baby! intimidating after your previous experience, but rest assured that you would not be here if you were entirely incompetent. Highlights are oil production, railway transportation, the jetpack, and many more. Completing phase three of project assembly is your next main objective. Just remember to focus on producing and delivering the project parts and fix its faith in you will be strengthened. Nice. Well, we're going to have the jetpack now, but then we're also going to have trains and you better believe that we're making a train bloody highway again because we have some bottled water to create. So a funny little story, I started going back to the hub to unlock jetpacks and unlock stuff, but I forgot to f***ing send it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back and uh, send it. I wonder why the lever was in the middle. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't think I've ever sworn in a, in a satisfactory in show before. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've ever done that before in any of the seasons. And this is season three. And you think I'll be used to it, but I'm even on the wrong floor over here. I'm in a, I'm in a marathon stream. You might already know this. I've talked about this a ton of times on the actual videos. Uh, 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 things be crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I think I forgot something. <laughs> Let's send it. <laughs> What's it going to make us this time? My eyes are sweating. I'm not going to lie to you. Blast it. Shoot it. There she goes. Oh, baby. It's getting some armor. Oh. It's now got some body work. Maybe it gets a spoiler. Bit of nitrous oxide. Pimp my assembly. <laughs> Featuring bits. <laughs> there we have it. Is Ada going to speak? Ada? 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 I guess not. Well, I guess I can run to the hub. Chat, you can all shut the f up. I, I, I guarantee when I open that chat, it's just full of lols, spoon emotes. You can all go to hell. You can all go to hell. Wait, Ada is speaking. Phase two of project assembly completed. You have been performing more adequately under pressure and are closer than ever to saving the day. Perhaps you were the right choice for the job. Time will tell. You will now enter phase three of project assembly. Continue as you are, and there should be no issue. For humanity, for fix it. I'll fix you, Ada. <laughs> All right, now I can go to the hub. I didn't. I thought she was actually done. I was gonna. Oh crap! I was gonna wait there and to see if see if, see if she um. Oh sugar, see if she. I I don't know what's going on. Just get me to the hub. All right, now we're at the hub. So I do have hyper tubes and vehicle transport to unlock, which we could do, but I really want jetpack right now. And I really, really want it because ugh, it's so much cheaper. Oh yeah. Give me, give me, uh, oh, never mind. I'll just go into my, my pocket dimensions and just transport some stuff over to my inventory because we can do that in 1.0. I need 1000 cables. I have them in here. But, oh, I don't. I have 800. Maybe I've got to wait for a couple. Boop. I need 1,000 plates. How many have I got? 
I have 800. Maybe we've got to wait for that as well. Well, I guess I'm going to wait. So, I'll be back in a tick. Boing. 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 Hey! Has anybody ever noticed that when you're on top of being like this, it looks like a male's point of view of looking down at his penis? <laughs> Have I got enough items yet? <laughs> I need 30, 50 more. Oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> oh shit. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm going delirious over here. I really am. All right, there we go. Cable and plates over. Then we can go into here. Boom. Done. Bada bing. Bada bosh. Send. Give me that jetpack. Jetpack, baby! Reached. Fix it has granted you the power of flight, provided you have a jetpack and the appropriate fuels. Oh, the jetpack refuels automatically baby. while you are standing on a surface, and different fuel types will affect the jetpack's Wait, functionality. Wait, I've saved this for a rainy With day. increased versatility, you will no doubt achieve efficiency Oh, I've already got some on me. Ada, shut up. I've got my jetpack. <laughs> shut up. What am I doing? I'm pressing stuff I didn't want to press. <laughs> this is... One way to start a video, bits. Well done. Well done. Give me jetpack. And I also have some eight package fuel. I even have some solid biomass. Oh, I'm back, baby. Yes. I'm back, baby. We now have speed to build. Actually, I need to build a liquid biofuel. So next up, I want to look at oil processing. Because we're going to need this as well. So we'll be able to unlock, obviously, oil, heavy oil residue, resin, cork, circuit boards, new stuff in the shop, oil extractors, refineries, valve, plastic, rubbers, fuels, and more. And then obviously all of these. Petroleum cork. Nice. Mark IV belts. Beautiful. Power. Uh, industrial manufacturing. Trains. Oh, baby. We need trains because we need to work on a highway. Which we need to work on a Mark III blueprint for that. I say a Mark III blueprint, but a, 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 a version 3 of our highway. Uh, and probably make that into a blueprint. Because there's no way I'm building that by hand again. Because that was ridiculous. I, I, I got halfway through that whole building season 2. And, and I was like, okay, we need to put this in a blueprint. This is ridiculous. Um, railway signaling. Pipe, wait, that's separate? Hold on a minute. That was never separate. Huh? Why are your rail signals set? Are they trying to force us to crash? So rail signaling uses... <gasps> Wait. Wait a minute. We need computers. We used to need computers to unlock trains, and now we've got... <clears throat> Pipeline engineering, and then fix it. Blueprints Mark II, baby. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to handcraft them computers. There's no way I'm automating them to unlock. I'm not going trains without signals. That is uh, no. Okay, so I'm over in the blue crater lakes because I feel like this is going to be a really, really, really good spot, especially when I want to build some turbo fuel because we've got plenty of coal. We've got plenty of sulfur. There's nitrogen. So when we want to go to rocket fuel, we've got plenty of water, a lot of room to go about. And then also... We can now blow up the shrooms, which have been a pain in our ass for us quite some time. As well as the big, massive shrooms that are in the uh, red jungle and up there, they're now destructible, which is just, just thank God. But also, I've now set up a hyper cannon to get from here and all the way over to the starter base or to the steel plant if need be. And I've also started on bringing in the oil. So we have three, th well, four, sorry, four 300 lines. Uh, these will get upgraded to Mark II pipes just because this is a pure nod that's a pure nod and then them two in there are pure nods as well so 
We've got quite a bit of oil to play with. We've also got an additional medium down here in pure as well to play with also. So we've got a little bit more oil to play with when we need to. Uh, but right now, I'm currently looking at refineries, trying to get some hard drives done so I can start getting some heavy oil residue and some diluted package fuel. But I won't be able to get the diluted package fuel just yet because I need the uh, unpackager unlock in the hub. So right now, we're just going to put down a few little refineries to get some heavy oil done with resin being made so we can get some plastic because plastic is needed for the hubs to unlock them uh, categories anyway. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put down a few refineries. Uh, let's say we can just go from, let's say here, like so. And then what we're going to do is look at what we want to make. So we are going to make it be making fuel, which needs crude oil. We are going to make some polymer resin. So we're just going to do this for now, just to give us a little bit of fuel and give some polymer resin. Or I could go down and just make some uh, plastic with heavy oil residue. Uh, and, you know, it's not going to give us much in there to turn it into fuel with heavy oil because we'll need six refineries to one refinery to make fuel. So I'm just going to do it this way to making fuel and then use the polymer resin to make plastic this way and then just add some water. So we're just going to do that. Uh, and that means if we are going to be using this fuel recipe, 60 crude, that's going to be 61, 20, 240. So I'm just going to put down five crude oils, uh, five refineries. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. And then we are going to put, I'm not going to put the floor holes because I never trust these floor holes. So these floor holes, sometimes, sometimes it's a thing. It can it can stop head lift. This is why I never use them. So I usually fake these, okay? A little spoiler alert for you. So I normally still put them here, but what I normally do is I, with my underflooring, I usually get the pipe and I usually take it under like so. I wanted that to actually place. Uh, and I usually place that down. So it looks like it's going through but it's actually not so this can be removed and the pipe's still fine right so i normally do that i usually place this after i usually place my uh, pipes just because it's a lot easier uh, but i never like to use them because of you know the the, the, the they had problems in the past uh, and i've shown it off in season two and season one uh with the head lift issue literally there's no water coming out the other end after that and the wall holes were done okay so now i'll place this first pipe i'm just going to place this right here like so i'm just going to do this for all of these along here like this i'm then going to remove that pipe that i placed i'm just going to get a pipe like that come down here turn it into horizontal vertical actually no let's do it from the bottom up otherwise if i do it from top to bottom what will happen is you can see it protruding out further from the machine than it would normally need to but if I go from bottom to top, it will protrude down further at the bottom than the top. So now you can, if you look at it this way, it's now more crusty against the machine. So it makes it cleaner on the factory surface. So we're going to do that all the way along here to these. Like this. And then we're just going to bring in one pipe to here. Um, and I'm, you're on this line, which means I need to take you to one, two. I'm going to have to take you this way and then they're like that. And then just fill all these pipes in like that remove that don't need to show you that anymore and then this right now is going to be consuming the fuel recipe so we're just going to paste that into all of these and then on the output side we are going to be outputting uh, 40 fuel and 30 polymer resin so that's going to be 30 60 90 120 150 resin so if we pull out another refinery and then look into plastic that's going to be 60 resin so what we could do is we are more than likely going to overclock this to allow us to do uh, 150 resin. So I do have power shards in my uh, depot. So I'm just going to pull them out. I'm going to overclock these to give me 50 per minute, which should now give me 150 polymer resin, which is exactly what we want. And we need to bring in 50 water, which is a very small amount to give me 50 plastic. Uh, well, 50 plastic per minute. So I'm just going to put that onto the end here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it this way, but I'm going to put it one space over. The reason I want to put it one space over is because the output of this, uh, of the fuel, is going to come around here and slide into here. So we can now get the mergers. We need to bring these out further than we need to because we're going to think about the pipe. So I'm just going to go one, two, and then this way. I could take the fuel pipe underneath, but for some reason, I kind of like the fuel pipe being shown within the, the, the oil factories. I feel like when it comes to oil factories and all that kind of stuff, Having exposed pipes when it comes to fuel or turbo fuel 
is sometimes the better option. It just aesthetically looks better, just having them pipes there. But like the oil, they can go underground because they're going to have a big network anyway. But everything else can be shifted, moving around and all that kind of stuff. But now that I've got the merges here, it is outputting 30 per minute. So we only need to mark one belt. And then we can switch over to a mark three belt and start placing nearly. And I can bring this pipe here, switch it to straight mode, take it around the side. And then this is going to connect straight up into here. So we're just going to bring this along here. I, I could take it in the middle, I guess. Take you to there. Take you around to here. That is then the resin going into there. We now need to bring in some water. So fight my little friends down the bottom. Otherwise, he's going to get in the way. And then we need to bring in the water. So I need to figure out where I want to bring that up. I think the best solution would be to bring it all the pipes along this area into like this uh, section to bring up into this side. So all the oil and stuff is coming up in one direction. Otherwise, I don't want to put it over here. And then later on, we've got to expand and I'm going to move all the pipes again. Little tip is always bring the pipes or inbound pipes in from the same direction. And then you can expand away from them. That's why I put this... Um, this tabletop right here, super far into this corner where the oil is. So I can expand that way in regards to fuel or upwards as well. So I'm going to place my water extractor down. But fun little fact, which I did on a YouTube short on it um, quite a few years back, is if you put a water extractor down, make sure you put foundations underneath the water. Because what will happen is the water extractor now snaps to the actual grid if you notice instead of it being free placement like it is over there then most people try to line it up to the center of the foundations to try and get it lined up but if you put foundations underneath the water you can align it to the grid so you don't need to worry about that and then when you bring your pipe down all you need to do is get that and then bring that down and then you, as you can see it's nice and straight coming straight from your machine so put foundations under the water and it will automatically snap to the grid that you're currently building on. Right, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, head lift. I kind of want to implement these little tips in case people don't know about them. If you actually get yourself a pump and you place it down, a lot of people don't know this because they, they'll be this close or, or, or whatnot. But if you click it once, it locks it into place, right? But if you look up, you, you can see where that water's going to get pumped to. So you can see right there that little nobble whatever you want to call it, uh, indicator right there. That's where the water or the head lift is going to push this water to before it stops being sent elsewhere. So when you place one, attach another one. But I also advise not to put pumps right here on the, the pipe because this is where a lot of people have uh, backflow issues because for some reason, when the water comes along here, it can come to this point and it's automatically coming back down here before it even touches this head lift. So always put your head lift, your first one, on a horizontal pump on a pipe like that and then once you put this onto here you, you can now see where it's going to head lift it to right so i never never get people to i tell people never to snap it to this just go a little bit below it and then place it and then we have two pumps right there the reason being after many science experiments i've done with bloody water and fluids over the many many years is uh this little thing right here seems to fix a lot of head flow issues that people have with machines and not filling the last two machines. So that is one of the, the things. Uh, and then also making sure you've got one of these at the top as well. Don't just leave this here and think of that's going to push it all the way through. So when we get up here now, normally we don't need to worry, especially when it comes to Mark II uh, pumps. I need, I, I need better fuel. I need better fuel. So when we get to here, put another one here like that. Oh, this kind of helps it through. And then we've got obviously that one over there. So we'll put another one over there. This really is to just stop any backflow coming down. Yeah, we could put a valve here, but it also resets the head lift at this point as well. So this is basically just resetting the head lift, not helping it because this one, if I was to remove that, it wouldn't surprise me if that one is only pushing just until the machine over there because it's that's definitely less than 10 meters going from there. So we're just going to reset the head lift here by placing another pump. Yeah, it's going to consume more power, but who cares? We're making power. And then, yeah, reset your head lift. Get them, put, always put one on the horizontal bit. One just underneath the little knobbly bit. And then, uh, or the indicator, whatever you want to call it. And then reset your head lift at the top. And then you should be fine for uh, any head lift issues. Because uh, obviously this will not come back down here then to stop the floor coming back up. So we're going to do the same over here. We're just going to put another pump down literally here, which will go into the machine then. Uh, and then we should be fine. So we're just going to put that there. And that should be good. Ever since I started doing this, I've never had a single issue with fuel generators, you know, backing up at the last couple. So when you put down 50 generators like we used to, the N4 always used to starve of fuel. Doing it this way, this is the, the, the way I've 
what's worked for me and it, it works so i'm not changing it uh there might be other ways but this works for me and uh yeah right the next little tip in revol uh, revol it revolves the next little tip uh, involves power poles. So if you remember back in update five, they introduced the power node, uh, the wall outlet. You can actually now reconnect it to a line and then that will split into two. So you can actually do this back in uh, 1.0. They've actually reintroduced it. There was major bugs with it way back in the day. So they removed it and now it's been re-added. So I'm just basically doing all this cabling right now. Uh, you can do that also with um, power lines, uh, power poles. So if you, you know, if you had this going down here, you can actually get yourself a power pole, aim at the line, and it'll actually build onto it and split the pole into two. And uh, yeah, that's been introduced into 1.0. I guess I should clarify as well. I did say these were pure. That's actually a normal. I just want to clarify that before uh, you guys in the comments start going a little crazy. Okay, so I've got the machines all up and running. They're all powered. We can see our juicy resin went out of our refineries moving along here which is now making plastic uh what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to grab some summer sloops and i'm actually going to put them into this refinery just so i can get this plastic uh a lot quicker because the purpose for this is just for me to take it to the hub and upgrade you know fuel generators unlock the packages and so on and so forth because right now we can't send this fuel anywhere because we don't have the fuel gens so Right now, I'm just going into here, full pipe network, and just flushing it because we can't do anything with it. So I'm just going to do that for now uh, until we get, I think, 400 plastic, which is going into my pocket dimensions uh, because I've put one on the top of that. So this is kind of coming along nicely, um, and I guess we could head back to the hub now and just kind of wait for this to do... Actually, no, just in case this fl these fluid buffers take a little bit time to buffer, but we'll wait. Uh, but I've got the summer sloop in there. I'm kind of interested to see how this summer sloop looks. Well, this uh, refinery looks with a summer sloop in it. Where's the actual VFX for it? Because they all spark like they're, they're overclocked, right? I'm kind of curious. This triangle thing pumps a lot faster compared to this one. Look at this one. This one kind of jerks and then comes out. And this one's just like, he's all double speed. I'm not seeing any of the purple smoke coming out unless it comes out the top. Obviously, we oh, it does come out the top. Ooh, big purple flame up top. Okay. Good to know. Right, let's get the fluid packaging unlocked. And let's get... Oh, no. I need 50 more. Never mind. I guess I've got to wait for 50 more copper sheets. How many more have I got? 22. Okay. I guess we're waiting. Right, now I've got enough copper sheets. So we can now launch the fluid packages. Come on, Ada. Hello. Milestone reached. Avoid the embarrassment of placing liquids in your pockets only for them to spread across your suit. Package and unpackage them with the packager. Packaging fluids allows them to be transported in your inventory, on conveyor belts, and by vehicles. For increased, non-pocket related fluid storage, you can now use the industrial fluid buffer. Nice. Beautiful. So, now we've unlocked that. Obviously, I've got hard drives already being scanned, so we want to be able to um, get diluted package fuel, which is something we want to kind of aim for. Uh, and now I want to aim for petroleum power. So we've just got the... F well, we want to get the fuel power generator and the industrial fluid fluid buffer. But also, now that we've unlocked fluid packaging, I want to go and make a little small factory um, just for me to make liquid packaged biofuel. Um, just so we can, you know, get some jetpack fuel. Because, as you know, I love using the liquid biofuel as power for my jetpack because I, it is very, very superior. Um, so now I need to go and get some rubber. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump back into the um, the bloody hyper cannon, jump back over there and change the plastic recipe to rubber to unlock that, and then we should be good. So we zoom in here, and, and then head over to the blue crater lakes. Incoming! Oh, I actually nearly bloody uh, landed on the... Oh, the uh, terrain then. Holy moly. Right. So back over here, I just want to change this refinery to do residual rubber. So I do need to change this to... It requires 100 uh, polymer resin uh, with what we're currently making. So we're, we are going to have a backup of resin, which is fine. And I'm going to currently empty this also. So we're just going to empty all of that. And now we should start seeing rubber coming to our 
pocket dimensions as soon as this starts emptying because the plastic will get uh, eliminated eventually. So I'm just currently waiting for that to happen. I'm guessing the plastic is still in here. It is. So I'm just going to remove that plastic. Actually, no, I'm going to take that over to my inventory. And then once the plastic in here has uploaded, it will then un upload the rubber to my pocket dimensions. So then in the meantime, I now need to make liquid biofuel. So I want to find somewhere that's going to be extremely nice and lush. And then I want to put a pocket dimension down, uh, a pocket dimension, a depot, so I can uh, get all of that uploaded to me. Because I will have to go over there every now and again, because I want to make, uh, we're going to have to make some um, canisters over there as well, just so I can top up the uh, the packages. Because I will be consuming them. So I'm just wondering if to use it in the grasslands, maybe. Just a small little depot or somewhere that's accessible via the hyper cannon maybe somewhere that's accessible via the hyper cannon i've gone through the hyper cannon and just landed near the steel base and i think i'm actually going to put it around here we're just going to chop a lot of these trees down and i'm going to add it to this already established steel factory we have here i'm probably just going to put it maybe just above here because i'm sick and tired of using solid biofuel uh, and dropping every now and again because i'm still kind of getting over the use of liquid biofuel so I'm going to get this set up. It's super simple. All we need to do is just semi-automate solid biofuel again and then start putting that into a refinery because if we look at a refinery real quick, we can now see liquid biofuel and liquid biofuel requires 90 solid biofuel per minute, 45 water, and we just need that. And I do have water just down here in this little lake. So more than likely, we're just going to use this where bean is currently having a bath right so i'm over at my steel base and as you can tell i've already put down the liquid biofuel so super simple setup you might have recognized this whole system over here from early days when you're trying to feed your liquid uh, your liquid your um your biofuel into your generators because update one um the uh biofuel biofuel bio generators um and all that kind of stuff they now obviously have inputs so um, this is basically doing the same. So we have a wood container and a leaves container. They go into here to make leaves. They then go into these two where they make solid um, biofuel. Solid biofuel goes into the refinery, mixed with water, which is coming from the pole underneath. This then makes liquid biofuel. And then I've got over here a, con a, a container where I manually just put plastic. Uh, and I only need to do this maybe once uh, I'm probably going to get quite a bit more plastic. Actually, I don't need to go over. I can bring some over here for me, right? Do that. I only need to fill this up maybe about halfway. Uh, and by the time I've got all of these done, the canisters would have been backed up. And, and when the liquid biofuel gets into here, by the time this container gets full, I'm going to be easily good for the next 100 hours, maybe 150 hours um, of gameplay. Maybe even longer than that. Because uh, I don't like using turbo fuel uh, for my um, thingies, my, my jetpack. I prefer the liquid biofuel. I like the longevity of it. And uh, it helps me build, uh, build and I've got more control. Then, rather than just having a short boost and then whatnot. So all I need to do now is just go and grab loads of leaves and then stuff these containers with it. And then we should be good for fuel. And then we can start working... Back over on the other fuel plants, we can start aiming for turbo fuel. Because obviously we want to get into rocket fuel and then also ionized fuel. Right, so I've managed to put all the fuel generators down, which is 10 fuel gens, which are consuming 20 fuel now. Because as of 1.0, they are consuming 20 fuel per minute and not 12 like they used to. Because they now are outputting 250 megawatts. So we've had an additional, you know, 2,500 megawatts on top of this. Uh, as you can tell by the current power, we're sitting on 4,900, which is okay for now. And that's why I'm currently building the fuel setup over here. As you might know, we've just unlocked the heavy oil residue. It's an alternate recipe, which allows us to take 30 crude oil into 40 heavy oil residue to make 20 polymer resin. This 40 heavy oil residue will then go to make fuel with bottled water to make diluted package fuel. Uh, so we can get to fuel up and running. And by the end of this, we should be making at least 30,000 because each line of, well, each, each line setup should be giving us around 7,500 fuel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've not done any maths on this just yet. I'm just kind of going off uh, the past uh, and all that kind of stuff. So they might change. Uh, and this one line here, right here, is just for one oil line. 
This one here is for the second one. And we are bringing in four. So normally, as you might know, in season one and two, I usually bring in about 12, which is usually in the spire cost. But this time, we're just going to make it a little bit smaller to make a total of around 30,000 megawatts. Um, just to get us by through heavy modular frames and, uh, and stuff like that so we can push onto aluminium and start getting onto nuclear a little bit faster just because we have a lot more stuff I've got planned later in regards to like mega projects and stuff and I want to move on to turbo fuel so I don't want to make this something crazy and then only go on to turbo fuel later so uh, now that I've done all this I do need mark two pipes because each of these uh, are outputting 40 heavy oil residue, which means 10 is outputting 400. Uh, so if I was to do four lines of, well, sorry, if we just look at this side, two lines of 400, uh, that will then go on. And then obviously this side here will do two lines of 400. Um, but I would like to get uh, Mark II pipes, not just that as well, because if we go under the ground, we can see that we have a Mark I pipe of oil going to uh, 20 of these refineries uh, which only this can support up to 10 right now until I get Mark 2. So I need to head over to the hub and then unlock Mark 2. Uh, someone else got a duplication glitch with the new manual uploading dimensional storage? Nope, not had that one. Uh, is it 20 turbo fuel? No, 7.5. <laughs> it wasn't online for two days and you're already at oil. We moving. So also yesterday you missed all of this then. Today and yesterday, we've been very productive. We've had this whole building kind of going through, which is making stators, motors, all that stuff, steel beams, in case industrial beams and whatnot. Right, so let's go in the hub, and I can't remember what I needed again. Is it tier six? Pipeline engineering mark two. Oh, I need 50 heavy modular frames. Hmm, I might even handcraft them. I'm not going to lie, just so I can get mark two pipes and mark two pumps, which means I need manufacturing, right? Yeah, I need to unlock the manufacturer before I even get them. Uh, totally forgot about that. So let's get this unlocked and let's get that unlocked as well. So I do need 200 more. Let me assign that real quick. Uh, let me get you uh, mortars. I'm going to have to start searching here now because it's getting that big. Is it 400 I need? 200 I needed. Okay, let's store them in there. Throw plastic in there, which I need 10 more of, which I've got in my inventory. Uh, I've got frames, so I can grab some of you. Um, I need 200 of you, actually. And then I need 1,000 cable, so I'm going to have to wait for 200 cable. Actually, no, I don't. So I can just run around here and grab some. So I can grab these from this storage right here, which now means I can unlock the manufacturer. And that's... The, actually, I need plastic. Plastic. Plastic, 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 plastic. Boop. Throw you in there. And... Boop. Send that off. Milestone reached. Manufacturers can receive up to four inputs for the production of complex parts, such as computers and heavy modular frames, but most importantly, the two new project parts. The modular engine and adaptive control unit are essential for the development of phase three of project assembly. You are making good progress. The future is starting to look bright. Nice. So now that we've got that, we can look into pipeline engineering, which I need to handcraft some heavy modular frames, which I need screws and all of this. Stuff. So I do have all of these. I just need to get a bunch of screws in my inventory, which we should have quite a few stockpiled up in these constructors up here because I'm not storing them or depoting them. So I do need to grab these manually. I'm just glad that it's up here and not anywhere else. So I can just grab you, jump over here, you, and then I can start handcrafting them. I do need to get some more screws though, because I, I can only make 38. All right, now I've got what I needed to get. So I can grab them, I can grab them, and I can fill all them in, which I should now be able to unlock the train. Boop. Milestone reached. Trains are excellent for efficiently moving vast quantities of parts. Mm -hmm. Train logistics can be made more precise and complex with tools found in the railway signaling milestone. Mm -hmm. I listen to all my pioneers, often when they're not even aware of it. So due to popular demand, I have added a motivational message. Choo-choo mother <laughs> Oh, it is saying choo-choo mother <laughs> Oh boy. Well, that was something. Right, next up, I'm going to put the computers. I'm going to put the pipes and the copper sheets in there. Oh, I don't have enough pipes. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, 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 hold. Pipes. Throw them in there. And then 
Boom. Now we've got signal in for trains. Beautiful. Milestone reached. Train signals placed on train rails can control and improve train behavior. This helps to avoid events where multiple trains attempt to occupy the same physical location. For information related to earlier train events, please refer to your employee non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> Lol. Right, next, pipeline junctions. So I want to select this. I've got the frames in there. I just need the plastic and I need the rubber, which I need to sort out on the other side because uh, I need to, you know, turn all that other stuff into rubber because we've got zero plastic, but I've got 504 rubber. So I can throw that in there for now. Oh, I can't. I've got to wait for this to come back, haven't I? Well, anyway, let me go and boost up whatever I need to over there, come back, get that done, and then we can hear Ada again. Milestone reached. Pipelines and pipeline pumps can now be upgraded to Mark II. They are like Mark I, but better. Pipes seem to be objects of fascination to humans. In fact, there are recorded instances of humans doing nothing but thinking about pipes for hours. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. So now I think we've got what we need in the milestones. I'm pretty sure we are. I can still unlock vehicle transport. I'm not just going to get there just yet, even though it's going to be super easy uh, to get these items. Logistics Mark IV. We can also get these now as well, so we can get Con IV, uh, Mark IV conveyor belts, which is going to be very, very ideal. Um, which will actually change my layout on the other side as well, because this is 480 per minute. And over at the refineries right now, I've made two lines of 270. So getting these are going to be very beneficial. And obviously the trucks, which means they go hand in hand with the vehicle transport, right? And then we can also look at fix-it blueprints. And then we can just start working towards completing the next phase, which as you can see at the top, we've already got the, you know, the versatile framework complete. So we just need to get the engines and the, uh, uh, the other ones. So I'm going to go through these and get these done as well. So I need to get all of this. So let me select that milestone. Um, put all you. I can't even put. I've got to wait. This is the thing. I'm currently waiting for these to bloody come back. Hurry up. Hurry up. So I have just unlocked the turbo heavy fuel alternate recipe, which is something we want to aim at. I wasn't expecting this to come to me so soon because I've been trying to get the diluted package fuel, but we might as well change to this to get turbo fuel. So it means working on the compacted coal and the heavy oil residue. We've already got this built up, so we should be fine with that. It just means that going forward from the current refineries I've to put down with the heavy oil residue alt, I now need to separate all of that heavy oil into this and then bring in some compacted coal and then combine that to make turbo fuel. So that's going to be the plan because I was going to do diluted package fuel, but that's just hit me earlier than the diluted package fuel. So we're going to go with that. And now with you coming back, wherever you are, taking bloody forever. I'm literally just sat here with chat just talking whilst waiting for you so I can get these unlocked. I can then start throwing these in here in a second. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boop. Nice. Get that in there. Get that in there. Get that in there. I need frames. I've got frames in here. Send you in there. Plates, cable. Uh, I've already done the cable. You, you, I need rotors. Are you in there? I need more plates. No plates. Plates in there. Nice. And then send you off. What I'm looking at doing now is because... Oh, never mind. Ada. Milestone reached. Tractors permit pioneers to move around the world in a manner similar to using legs, except with wheels and the rampant consumption of natural resources. They can also be automated to self-drive and deliver resources between truck stations, which in turn facilitate automation of loading, unloading, and refueling. Nice. This speed is super rapid. Look at it. I've kind of noticed as well that the... the uh, oh, there's a hard drive in there, isn't there? Uh, when you're researching alien tech, how the Mercy Sphere goes in there. I am looking at increasing my upload speed right now as well, because I do have 13 Mercy Spheres available. I have got 17, in fact. Uh, but I also need 151 uh, of the reanimated, not reanimated Sam. Where is it? I put it in here for storage. Some fluctuators. I've only got 21. But I'm going to handcraft more of them so I can get a better upload because going to from 60 to 120 is going to be very, very beneficial, especially now that I'm building larger projects. Because I found out recently that I'm spamming like re uh, re bloody, what they called? Um, 
refineries and I'm getting through the next line and I'm running out of pipes and stuff so I feel like having the next upload is going to be beneficial for me right now and then move on to the next storage because I don't have enough for this one just yet okay so more progress has been made over at the plants because now that we have the heavy alt uh, turbo fuel some new calculations needed to be made so if I go over to obsidian we can see this is what we're going to be wanting to make from one 600 crude oil line and whatever's in green is I've currently built okay so right now we've got 600 crude coming in that's going into 20 refineries right here which is these 20 refineries here right on the right hand side ignore the left hand side right now ignore everything on this left hand side because this one crude oil line is going to these 600 uh, 600 20 refineries and these refineries are taking in 30 crude oil outputting 40 heavy oil residue and 20 polymer resin so these 20 refineries are making 800 heavy oil residue we have a line of 600 so which is this one so this is the line of 600 right here and then this one is a line of 200 this line of 600 is making its way upstairs onto this new underflooring we've added so this is 600 this is 200 and this 600 heavy oil residue is going into 16 uh refineries which need which i'll show you in a second let me just extend this out which is going into a refinery using the alternate turbo heavy fuel because we don't have blenders yet to do the other turbo fuel so 16 uh well 600 divided by 37.5 so 600 divided by 37.5 is 16 refineries we have an additional 200 on that so if we change that to 200 that is going to be 5.33 so back in obsidian here this is why you can see we have 20 refineries here we have 16 refineries here and 5.33 so a 600 line of heavy oil residue is going up to this and then 200 heavy oil residue is going into these and we've already built these which is in this room upstairs but i've also done a little bit of decorating as well and i've made my first blueprint which i'll talk to you about in a minute and will be available to download in the discord it's only it's only decorational but i'll show you in a second how we built it so then if people ask we can make a video on it i guess so if we go through the doors here this is the room we've kind of made it is turbo fuel so it is this is the reason why it's red so we have the pipes down here we've got these little fences that come along here we've also made like these is if you've if you've watched season two of the uh series um of satisfactory you'll recognize this very similar to the diluted package fuel design we kind of did but we've now incorporated it into this season and uh made it a little different because obviously we've added these new fences and these are the blueprints right here it's these little columns these ones aren't blueprinted but these lights here are and the 800 uh, heavy oil residue is going into all 21.333 of these refineries so we have 16 of them which is taken in the uh 600 uh, heavy oil residue and then the last 200 is going into one two three four five nope that's wrong one two three four five and this end one over here is actually overclocked to the additional 33.33 percent giving us a total of uh, 40 turbo fuel so back into obsidian we can see that these 60 re 16 refineries that are consuming the 600 heavy oil residue is making 480 turbo fuel and then the 5.33 is making 160 giving us a total of 85.333333 fuel gens making a total of 21.3 gigawatts of power and just take just remember this is only for one crude oil line so as stated here whatever is in green is complete so we have completed the crude oil we're bringing that in we've now completed the 20 refineries which is downstairs we've also completed the 5.3 and the 16 refineries which is on this layer which is in the decorated room because we've been sciencing around with some stuff so the next plan of action is we need to bring in 640 sulfur and 640 coal into 25.6 assemblers to make 640 compacted coal where 480 of that compacted coal is going to go into the 16 refineries and 160 of that compacted coal will go into the 5.33 refineries we've not talked about the uh, the resin yet that's being produced from the heavy oil residue which is right here so i don't know if i'm going to go and make plastic from this or, or we're going to make rubber 
I don't know where we're going to take this. We might do a mixture of both. I don't know yet. I don't know what we're going to do. I could make recycled plastic and recycled rubber, but recycled plastic and recycled rubber does require fuel to be made. But if you remember, we're actually bringing in four crude oil lines. Two of them are going to get used for turbo fuel. One of them is for that one line we've just been talking about. The other line is for the other half, right? So then we have these two crude oil lines to, uh, to worry about. So either I'm going to make a diluted package plant, which is more than likely just because if we wanted to power even half of this system, it's going to require quite a bit of power. And if we look at our current power grid, we're only producing 4,900 megawatts. 2,400 of that is from our coal plants, and the additional 2,500 is from these 10 fuel generators, because these fuel generators are now making us 250 megawatts compared to pre-update 1.0, where they was only making us um, 150. But that also, they are now taking 20 fuel per minute. So right now, this is looking like a little platform. That's all. It's just a skeletonized platform right now. Uh, we're not doing any form of supports right now because I don't know where things are going to go. And I don't want to put supports just here for then these buildings, what we might put here, might clip through. So right now, it's just going to be floating. But I do need to find out more sulfur. Because in regards to coal, we've actually got four coal nodes here. And all of these are normal. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then four is not going to be enough to make for both coal nodes. Well, both coal nodes that we need for both lines of assemblies. Because technically, if we want to power both of them crude oil lines, we're going to need everything here doubled. So that means we need to bring in 1,280 sulfur, 1,280 coal, and that will be uh, 51.2 assemblers. Um, so right now, there is enough coal below me right here to make for one half of that system but if we head north just up on this mountain there's actually a pure node and a normal node uh, which we can utilize and we only need to bring in that pure node and combine it with these core nodes over here so we can get one uh, two if we combine two of them normal nodes together combine another two that's two lines and then we bring in that pure node that's going to be i think 1400 and something coal we just then then need to find the sulfur and if we scan for sulfur, we should have some over here somewhere. And that's why I'm saying right now, the Blue Crater Lake is extremely good for turbo fuel. Because of the water, we've also got nitrogen uh, gas here in, when we want to start working on uh, rocket fuel later on, which does require turbo fuel as well. So we have some sulfur just up here in these little little kind of... Oh, I don't want to be bloody flying there. Ah, cheats. That's because I'm bloody pumping my uh, jetpack. Is it up? Is it up higher? Where is it? Sulfur? Oh, it's up here. And here it is. So we have a normal. We also have a pure. And we have a impure. So we definitely need to bring in more sulfur. Because that's a 480. That normal and that uh, that normal and impure is not going to be, well, 480. Um, if we can find another impure, we can get two of them. And we just need another additional 480. Well, just less um because we need three lines of full 480 to come in uh to here as well to make up for these assemblies uh, assemblies assemblers to make the compacted core we need for each of these two lines right so i placed down the assemblers which i've talked about which is the 51.2 i believe it is um so this side here so these assemblers are for this side of the refineries and these assemblers here are for the other side of the refineries and this is 60, 64, 640 compacted coal. The only thing is now we need to bring in the sulfur and we need to bring in the coal. Which I think is where we will bring in our first train line. I think the sulfur that we have up there that we've just come from, uh, we can belt that in. The coal that's down here, I think we can actually belt this one in. Uh, but the sulfur that's up there and coal, I'm thinking about getting a train line to pop in here and unload here. That's going to wrap around here potentially. And this could be the start of our highway. Maybe. I don't know yet. We might just put it into here and then maybe we'll change it at some point and it just bypasses through and this could be the highway um, or it splits off from the highway. I don't know. 
Uh, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. But right now, I need to go and grab this and set up trains. And I think that can wait till next time. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, as always, keep smiling. And uh, I'll see you in another video.